turning away from the pale and downtrodden and the words they say which we won't understand don't accept that what's happening is just a case of other suffering or you'll find that you're joining in the turning guitar into another edition of Pink Floyd Friday. So glad you could join us today for this truly beautiful song on the turning away. This was um, off of Momentary Lapse of Reason, 1987. And uh, you know, the first album after uh, the split from Roger Waters. And this song showed up um, just as a, a staple during, during the 80s and 90s uh, tours of Pink Floyd. Showed up on, you know, Delicate Sounds of Thunder and they played it throughout the Division Bell tour as well, and etc. So you can really tell that uh, Gilmore and the other members uh, really were happy about this one. And this was co-written by uh, Anthony Moore, who who wrote quite a few of the lyrics for the Momentary Lapse of Reason and Division Bell albums. And uh, but uh, David uh, did rewrite the last verse. So I was I was quite interested to learn that. Um, and I really uh, enjoyed the last verse, so I'm going to read it out here. No more turning away from the weak and the weary. No more turning away from the coldness inside. Just a world that we all must share. It's not enough just to stand and stare. Is it only a dream that there will be no more turning away? Just a beautiful end to that song. This song has been com uh, compared to like sort of a Celtic sound or an Irish ballad. Um, and it also is incredibly rhythmically complex, which you may find that surprising based on the demo. Um, but there are two measures of 6-4. Um, and so I'm going to teach us the exact strumming patterns throughout the form and guide us through these, these measures because it can be a little tricky. Um, if you're curious about my setup for that demo, I thought I would get a little creative with it. Um, I used a freeze pedal to freeze a chord, and which I sang the first verse over. In the recording, it's just, uh, you know, uh, some synthesizers holding a, a chord, and it kind of sounds like a drone, as if a, a bagpipe or alien pipes were, were holding a drone. So that's partially what gives that song that, that, that character. So I had a freeze pedal to hold that G5 sound. Then I had um, a Strymon reverb pedal going into my looper. So then I looped uh, this wash of reverb to sort of simulate the synthesizers. So not necessary to do that to play this song. Um, you know, you could just sort of sing over a couple couple G notes uh, the first verse, but um, really it's just a cappella for the most part, and then I start strumming. This is part one of this lesson. Part two is going to be next week. Really hope you tune in for that. That'll be the guitar solo. And it's just such a beautiful solo. Uh, very Gilmore. Um, get your get your whammy uh, bar ready. Um, and, you know, I mean, it, the, when he plays it live, too, it's just the solos are just so great. So I'm really looking forward to that. A little nervous, uh, but I'll, I'll get to work on that. But um, 
yeah, this will be definitely a nice acoustic strumming lesson and uh, a good chance to dig in. So check out the tab on the Patreon. And, um, you know, I make Pink Floyd Friday available at the $2 a month level. Also subscribe, hit the bell icon and the thumbs up. Let's jump in. All right, let me start off by just playing the strumming pattern of this first line here, because I think you'll get the idea of how we can kind of create space while keeping the beat going, even if we're not strumming all the time. So let me just play this here. Okay, that would be the first four bars. The last bar was in 6-4, so what you might want to do is really get the melody going in your head because counting it all out um, can be a little bit a little bit tedious, which, you know, but that's fine too if you want to count it out every time until it's just in your in your head. But the melody can guide you as well. So there's only five chords in this song, um, pretty much just four chords for the verse, and then the interlude, instrumental interlude has another, you know, as an A minor in there. So let's just start. The, the first chorus is a cappella, and then, you know, the guitar comes in here on an upstrum of G. <laughs> a pickup note into the verse and that's when he says um, it's a sin that somehow okay so G chord down down up down and sometimes I'm showing you to only strum the bass strings right so down down up down down then a C over G down E minor and we're gonna go down 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 up down up that bar down and then D chord then an up down on a G down. okay and I'm gonna hum the melody along as as you practice along with me so let's try that first bar first uh, line there it's a sin that somehow So hopefully that 6-4 bar made more sense as I was singing the melody. Next line here, C over G. Uh, and I did, and I'm, I'm not putting the, the down ups anymore because hoping that you understand that if it's a down beat, it's a down strum. If it's an up beat, it's an up strum. But I'll, I'll walk you through it here. So this line can be a little tricky. So why don't I play this line because there's going to be an, um, a, a late entrance with the E minor. And we, we start with a down mute and then a quick up. So, let me play it. I think you'll see what I mean here. Okay. So, this might be one of the more difficult parts, but we can do it. So, C over G, we'll go down, 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 up, down, up. Okay, that's that bar. Now we do a... A mute. If the mute messes you up, don't worry about it. Just just wait. Um, so that's fine too. I barely muted there. So the mute would be down and then a quick up. You could go down, but it might mess up your sense of timing. So I would go up for now, and you go up, down, down, and then C over G, down, down, up, and then a G chord. And then we do another late arrival of the E minor. So that would be mute up, up, down, down. So let's play that entire line nice and slow. See if we can get that sort of clear. Once again, I'll hum the melody, hoping that that will help guide you along a little bit. Over all we have Okay, so that first bar of that line was 6-4, but with the melody playing, hopefully it makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, and six and. Uh, and then a one is paused. Okay, so that's the tough part. Last time through that line. Three, over all we have known, four, five, and six. 
Basics. Don't expect that what's happening. Last time. Da, 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 da. Okay, good. Believe it or not, we're almost done. Um, so then the next line here would be the last line of the verse, which is also the chorus, by the way. Okay, so let's let me let me play through this line so we can get the sound in our ears. Um, I have to remember the lyrics here. Suffering. So here we go. Suffering. Just beautiful stuff here. So let's let's go through this strum by strum. G down, down, up, and do a C over G down. Four. And then a, a mute late arrival to the G. So G. Down, up, down, four, uh, uh, up, down, down. Okay. Now a bar of six, four. C over G, down, down, up, E minor. Down over D, and then up, down, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's a little confusing. Uh, and then you would go up on the E minor, down, and then pick up to the next verse. So that entire line, I think it'll be helpful just to play along with me while I sing. So let's play this line together, and I'll sing the melody. Hopefully that'll help you in, in sort of uh, hearing this rhythm. Ready? Suffering, or you'll find that you're joining in the turning point. Down, up, down, up. It's a sin that's something. Okay. Then we just repeat. So let's play the entire verse together. Then we'll cover the interlude and we'll pretty much be done with part one because the solo is part two, which is not covered in this video. All right, so the entire verse, let's give it a go, nice and slow. It's a sin that somehow light is changing to shadow and casting its shadow over all we have known. Unaware how the ranks have grown. Oh, sorry. Pretty much got it. I just had that big one little mistake there. But practice that as many times as you need to. Last time. Good job. So now uh, that moves us into an interlude. We land on a G, two, three, four. Now we go over F sharp and we start this instrumental interlude. No guitar solo really yet, just a nice sort of eight bar section here. So let's cover that. The string pattern is dramatically simpler, just down, 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 up, down. But it is in six, four. So don't worry about the six, four. I think you'll hear it. Let's let's just start it and I think you'll you'll see. Here's this line. Okay. So that would be that line. So it's down, 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 up, down, down, down throughout the entire section. So E minor, here we go. Down, 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 up, D. C major 7 over G, down, D chord, E minor, D, A minor, and then over B. So you just, just lift everything and basically just play the, the, the B note. Okay, next line, C over G, D, A minor. on an E minor chord for 12 beats. Nice little fretless electric bass riff and then um, 
we go back to another verse. Right? Same thing as before. And that's actually the last verse. No more turning away. Then we have a, a, a solo, which I'll cover next time. Um, but the chords are really simple in the solo. It's actually just E minor, C, E minor. Then E minor, C, G. No, I'm sorry, E minor, D, G. So. This beautiful Gilmore solos. Here's the D to G. And I just loop that. G, F sharp. Not even going to try it on the acoustic. There you go. Um, pretty, pretty tough with the six, four, if, if, if you let it, uh, sort of freak you out. But if you follow the melody, I think, I think that's a good way to go. Let the melody guide you and listen to the song, play along with the song, play along with me. Hopefully those things all help. Let me know. See you next week for On the Turning Away, part two.